If you're anything like me, you'll have thought at some point as you wipe the steam off the mirror, trying to shave as you're attempting to catch up on your YouTube feed, wouldn't it be great if I could just watch YouTube in the mirror and that it had magic properties so that it would never steam up? Well, I expect that's somewhat unlikely, but I'm going to help you out anyway and show you how to build the best gadget you never thought you needed, which is a DIY smart mirror with a built-in hidden screen system and powerful stereo speakers, so you can watch YouTube videos whilst you're doing your teeth or having a shave. It's also got the ability to completely eradicate any steam buildup, and it works reliably without using electricity. It's far from magic, but it does work brilliantly, so stick around to see exactly how to build it. This video is sponsored by Harry's. With refills starting from just $2, get razors and other shaving products delivered straight to your door every two, three or five months for the ultimate shave. Visit the link in the description for more info. So the first thing to get going with is building the frame for the mirror itself. But for the demisting method to work, it needs to double as a clamping system, for which you'll see the purpose of in just a minute. Because of this, we'll be constructing it from scratch using medium density fiberboard, known as MDF, which can be bought from most hardware stores and cut into strips like you see here. One set of strips is made out of slightly thicker board, yet is cut to be slightly less wide. This is so that it can fit onto the wider flatter pieces to make a lip. Wood glue is perfect for sticking them together, and to hold them in place whilst it dries, I recommend using lots of pegs. Once they are dry, we can now cut them down to the required size, with a 45 degree angle for each cut. You can do this by hand if you like, but for best results, I recommend using a mitre saw. I found this old rusty one in a friend's garage, <laughs> After giving it an oil, it actually worked beautifully. More wood glue can be used to join these pieces together, and a good way of holding them in place as it dries is to use staples, which can be easily pulled out again once it's set. So with the frame almost complete now, we need to get another piece of fibreboard to fit onto the back. Holding this in place with some clamps, we need to add a few pilot holes that go far enough through to mark the back of the frame. Once the back is removed, these marks on the frame can be widened, being careful not to go all the way through to the front however. This will later allow some threaded inserts to be added, which will in turn add some good strong threads for machine screws to be utilised for the clamping system. Before we screw these in place however, we need to give it a lick of paint. As fibreboard is, well, rather fibrous, it does require sealing before being painted. To do this, you could use a watered down PVA mix, but I prefer to use dedicated MDF primer. I recommend doing two coats of this, sanding down well between each coat. Once that's done, a few coats of normal undercoat can be added, again sanding it down to make it super smooth. With that done, the final top coat can be painted on, and this needs to be a gloss type so that it will resist moisture well, as the final mirror will of course be used in a wet environment. With it dry, it should be looking something like this, and the threaded inserts can be added onto the back. Things are really going to take shape now, as it's time to add the mirror surface, for which we'll need a two-way mirror. These leave some of the light to pass through, while reflecting the rest meaning that bright objects behind the mirror can be seen through it. As you can probably tell, purely down to time constraints, I only have an acrylic version here, which means that it is somewhat flexible. This wouldn't pose a problem for a standard smart mirror, but due to the demisting method this project uses, it is prone to bending, which distorts the reflection. So I'd say it's an absolute necessity to go with a toughened proper glass mirror instead, as it will always be rock solid and flat, and not much more expensive. Now for the demisting method to work, we need to make a watertight chamber behind this mirror, for which we'll first need a length of solid rubber o-ring gasket cord. This can be inserted into the frame and cut down to size, joining it up with super glue to make a complete seal. While this joint isn't perfect, it shouldn't matter too much so long as it's at the top of the mirror, as it will be above the waterline. For the other side of this chamber, we will need a sheet of non-mirrored acrylic, but before fitting it, we need to add some black vinyl wrap to it. 
Being black, this will later restore a lot of contrast to the mirror, making it look like a normal mirror rather than a two-way one. It can just be placed on top of the gasket, and the whole thing can for now be put to one side as it's time to work on the back panel, starting with adding the screen. This particular one is from an old laptop, and to drive an image to it I purchased a separate driver board from eBay, which allows you to use it like a standard monitor. I have a video specifically on the topic of rigging up old laptop screens like this, so if you need more information you can find a link to it in the description. Regardless, this needs to be positioned on the back panel and marked out with a pencil. To cut this out, a hole needs to be first drilled somewhere within its perimeter and a jigsaw can then be used to cut it out. By the way, let me know in the comments if you want to see me make a video about my recommendations for tools like this, as I may do a couple of videos on the topic if there's sufficient interest. So, once it's cut out, the screen itself should be able to drop in easily, as you see here. Whilst we're cutting things out, it's a good time to make a bracket for the mirror to hang off the wall from. To do this, I drilled a small hole in a piece of aluminium and then cut to it with a hacksaw to make a slot. This could then be screwed to a block of MDF, utilising some washers to push it away from the block surface, which allows room for the head of a screw, so that it can slide up in place. This is how it will later be mounted onto the wall. I then glued this larger block to some smaller ones so that there will be sufficient room for the rest of the components when the final mirror gets mounted onto the wall, and then screwed it to the back panel. This can now be painted in a similar way to the frame, only this time of course it won't be seen, so you don't have to put as much effort into making a good finish for it. With that done we can now start working on the mirror's power system. Electricity in a bathroom? I hear you cry. Well, the voltage and power levels will be so low it's safe for a humid environment, as we're merely going to power it with an off-the-shelf power bank. This one supports USB power delivery spec, so can output 12 volts if told to do so by a little USB-C power board, and should power the mirror for about 30 days assuming half an hour daily usage. To hold the battery in place, I designed a little 3D printed bracket for it, which I glued in place along with a USB plug so that the battery could be slid in and out. If you don't have a 3D printer, there are lots of other materials this could be made of, and I would suggest just using MDF pieces. Adjacent to this, I glued in place a power switch, one end of which could be soldered to the positive output of the power board. Next, we can take a power socket and solder the negative side of it to the negative output of the power board, and the positive side of it to the other wire from the switch. Testing this out with a multimeter, you should see a voltage output coming from it, and pressing the button on the board cycles through the output voltages, and we'll leave it on 12 volts. With that done, we can drill a hole on each side of the support bracket, and then mark through these onto the acrylic that we added the black vinyl to earlier. These marked points can now be carefully drilled out with a larger drill bit, being methodical so as not to crack the acrylic. Using a knife, the surrounding vinyl can be removed so that a tubing nozzle can be glued in place with some superglue. These are what will later let the water in and out, so need to be properly sealed. Whilst we're working on this acrylic layer, we also need to use some tape and mark out the perimeter of the screen cutout too, only offset inwards slightly. This is so that the vinyl will hide the screen's bezels, so that just the LCD part of the screen can be seen through the final mirror. This too needs to be scored with a knife so that it can later be peeled away, and to get the curved corners I just scored along the edge of something circular. For now though, we'll leave this in place so that the acrylic layer is kept free from dust. So now it's time to clamp the whole thing together. With the back panel in place, there should be about a 1-2mm gap all the way around the edge. This is because the gasket is lifting up the back acrylic layer, and the idea is for the machine screws to squash the gasket and clamp it in place, making the required watertight seal. With that done all the way around, it's time for the final step, which is to make the powerful speaker system. As this speaker system needs to be very thin so that it can fit onto the back of the mirror, we'll be using some small 1 inch speaker drivers. I salvaged mine from some speakers originally designed for old Sony Walkmans. As they use some weird proprietary connector, they're basically useless these days, which is why I decided to disassemble them to recover the speaker drivers. However, these small drivers can be bought individually from eBay, and you can find a link for that in the description. You absolutely don't need as many speakers as I have here, but the more you do use, the louder and fuller the sound will be. 
For ease, I used a 3D printer to make a bracket for these speakers to mount onto, but alternatively it would be easy enough to make this out of MDF, utilising a spade bit to make any required holes. Once wired up, a variety of MDF pieces can now be used to construct an enclosure around them, and you may want to use a bit of stuffing inside to help to produce a smoother sound. Again, as this will be on the back, you don't need to give it too much attention when painting it, and once finished it should look something like this. The gap in the middle between the two speaker enclosures is the perfect space for housing the driver board for the screen, which I mounted in place with some long PCB pillar standoffs. The back of my particular board actually has a 5 volt output, to which I soldered a micro USB connector. This is so that it can feed this 5 volts to power a Chromecast, which is the backbone of the mirror's video functionality, as it can receive a video stream from your smartphone and then push this to the display board. When idle, this also shows the time and current weather, which is super handy. All that's needed now is an amplifier to power the speakers. This particular one has all of the input and output pins marked, so it's easy to wire up, and it can receive its audio signal from the display board's headphone socket. So before fitting this completed rig to the back panel, we can first peel off the vinyl that was cut earlier so that the screen can be seen through both acrylic layers. Now holding the screen in place is fairly straightforward. I just used some tape on the sides and then some little foam pads to lightly press it against the acrylic when the speaker array gets put on top and screwed in place. After the power socket from the USB board has been plugged in, the mirror is almost ready to use, but we do need some tubing to fit over those nozzles we added earlier. These will let hot water in and out of the internal watertight chamber for the demisting effect, so one tube needs a cap moulding around it so that it can fit onto a hot tap, while the other one can act as an overflow. With that done, the mirror is now complete, and looks very smart and minimal from the front. With it off, there's no internal emitted light, so it looks 100% like a normal mirror, and all that's left to do now is to take it and hang it up in your chosen location. Turning it on, the Chromecast will boot up and you'll be able to connect to it from your smartphone and select whatever videos you want to play on the mirror. And it looks super cool with the curved edges. Audio is loud and clear as well and can easily overcome the sound of a shower so that you can listen to music or podcasts as you get ready for your day. A steamy bathroom isn't an issue either, as once hooked up to a hot tap, the mirror can be filled with warm water, which in turn heats up the front mirror surface, making it impossible for it to steam up for quite some time. Nice. The intention here is for the mirror to always contain water, and for it to be refreshed with warm water whenever you want to use it. This method was chosen because it doesn't involve high power electricity with heated elements, so is inherently safer for a DIY project in a bathroom and the water doesn't block the screen's image like heated elements would. It is certainly quite novel, but it works, and because of that I say, why not? So, if you're wondering why I'm particularly clean-shaven for this video, it's because it's been sponsored by... Harry's. Harry's is a subscription-based shaving company set up in 2013 when founders Jeff and Andy were, like most men I expect, fed up of paying for overpriced and over-designed razors. So they raised some money, bought a factory in Germany, and have since been selling razors at a fair price to millions of men. The starter set includes a weighted handle with textured rubber grip and five blade razor cartridge, foaming shave gel, and a travel cover to protect your blades when you're on the move. Refills start at only $2 per cartridge, and they're delivered straight to your door at a time schedule that suits your routine. The quality German engineered blades ensure a close smooth shave, to keep you looking smart and presentable. So to redeem a trial set for just $3, visit harrys.com slash DIYperks and you'll be supporting the channel by doing so. Oh, and another thing that's really important is that Harry's donates 1% of sales to support men's mental health charities, which is super important as it's something that's often overlooked. So again, that's harrys.com slash DIYperks and you could have a shave as close as mine. So that's it for this video, I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you have fun making your own smart mirror because honestly it's one of the coolest projects I've done for this channel and I think you'd enjoy it if you built one too. 
So uh, other than that, I'm Matt, you've been watching DIY Perks, and I hope I see you next time. Goodbye for now.